Well, look who's back, Amy Hecker Lane. We're gonna talk I'm about mainstream movies then. Yay. This is this golden era where you're making $100 million. We finally made it. You know, when I was first doing um, Fast Times, I felt like I was this strange little object that people were kind of like curious about, like, why is the girl here? Mm -hmm. By like the mid 90s, when you'd be talking to the crew and they'd be saying about what other projects they were on, you'd find that most of them had worked with a woman at some point. Like, mm -hmm. that was not this strange, weird thing, that mm -hmm. everybody had some experience working with women directors. Yeah, this for me is an interesting time because it's this bridging of independent films within a studio system environment. Yeah. You were given an opportunity because you were a talented filmmaker. Well, now we're going to talk about Nora Ephron. Again, we, we can almost devote a, an, an evening to Nora Ephron movies. Nora Ephron said the hardest thing about being a female director is just becoming a director. She started out as a, a writer and wrote, you know, was a columnist. Her parents were in show business. She was married to Carl Bernstein. And she was a novelist. I mean, she wrote Heartburn, she wrote Silkwood. Mm -hmm. She was an amazing writer. And, and that could have been a career, that, a lo, in, in the old, you know, golden age of Hollywood, that probably would have been enough. Well, that would be enough for anybody at any time. I mean, to be such a respected mm -hmm. writer in all medium, I mean, she, films, novels, a play, mm -hmm. I mean, you know, she's no slouch. And I often wondered, you know, she, she wrote When Harry Met Sally, and I wonder if, you know, the success of When Harry Met Sally made her feel, I wish I had directed it. I mean, when I've heard her talk about the movie, and I love the film, and it's wonderfully directed by Rob Reiner, and, but she wrote it, and she didn't really get, in the end, the director really gets yeah. the, the credit for the film. And, I, and then she does her, you know, the Sleepless in Seattle with Meg Ryan, and there's a lot of crossovers, and Rob Reiner Rob Reiner's in, it. in yeah. Sleepless in Seattle. But I, I have no idea, but I wondered about that. Is that, a, you know, the, a, 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 the feeling too, well, why shouldn't I direct it too? Why shouldn't I write my own you know, material and, and direct it? And then she has a huge success with it. I wonder if she was around the set a lot. In, um, when Harry met Sally, if she was like there and having thoughts about how things should be done and making you know, comments, yeah, and that would have been very typical for that time in filmmaking. Yeah, I, I think it was. Uh, I, I wouldn't. I don't want to say gigantically collaborative. It wasn't like an independent film, but again, I feel like the '90s represents this time of where there was a lot of money it was it, money wasn't being wasted but there was money there was time to rehearse that you know there was time to do rewriting uh to fix things to make sure the sets look nice and these people all knew each other mm -hmm. i mean it wasn't like you know here's the script oh there's your director it's like they yeah. seem to all you know have come up together and come from showbiz families mm -hmm. and you know, have this collaborative spirit. Yes, and and Tom Hanks working with Nora Ephron. He'd worked with Penny Marshall a couple times, mm. and he develops this relationship with Nora Ephron. You know, we're there now working together, and where it seems as if like, oh, well, this is what life is going to be like for female directors. You yeah, know, we all get to have Tom Hanks. <laughs> <laughs> he does three movies with, uh, you know, with Meg Ryan, uh, and it's just a big, dense movie. It, it combines. I think that what I love about Sleepless in Seattle is it combines Nora Ephron's love of classic filmmaking, mm -hmm. and that she infuses it in the film without it being overpowering or cliche. It, she's unapologetically romantic. Yes. Well, from 1993, here's Nora Ephron's Sleepless in Seattle. <laughs>